What up, everybody? Instructor Beats back again. Dr. Bones here to dig into some math with you today. So, let's unearth our objective today. Our objective today. Today, I will be able to multiply a mixed number by a mixed number by using my distributive property knowledge. Oh, my, what a scary dinosaur. So, before we begin, just like us paleontologists like to look in the past to help us understand our new discoveries, so we too must look to past knowledge, learn to help us understand what we are doing today. So previously we learned about the distributive property and how it can split a bigger array into smaller pieces so that we don't have to memorize our large multiplication facts, right? As long as we add it back together. Then we use that knowledge to help us multiply bigger whole numbers, kind of like this. Ooh, what a big problem there. Just kidding. A lot of you guys may be able to figure that out by yourself, but we did. We learned how to use the distributive property knowledge, and many of us did this with the open array. So instead of drawing out the really big array, right, and some of your teachers, <laughs> bless their souls, might have called it a box method, but really we call this the open array. And we split our factors up using our distributive property knowledge and our place value knowledge, right? And we did there like that. And then we are able to multiply larger numbers using simple basic facts, right? Three times four is 12, but really that's three tens times four tens, so we had to add the two zeros. And then over here we had 60, and then here we had 240, and we had 12. And this was kind of a nice fun math way to break apart our array, but then we had to add all the partial products back together. And when we add all these back together, we get a product of 1,512. So hopefully that's just the background knowledge, right? The fossil bone structure of the dinosaur that we're building today in our heads. Sorry, just get carried away with math in dinosaurs, of course, because I'm Dr. Bones. So we're going to be doing the same type of skill today, just with mixed numbers. So here we have a doozy of a problem. We're trying to figure out what fossil does this number represent? So we have 5 and 1 third times 7 and 2 fifths. And previously, we may have taught you to turn those into improper fractions, but today we're going to be using our distributive property knowledge. So, it doesn't matter what factor you put on top because of the commutative property of multiplication. So, let's just go ahead and put 7, right? So, we're going to split the whole number and the fraction up. There we go. And then we're going to, ooh, crazy pin. And then we're going to put 5 plus 1 third over here. So, again, you notice I'm just splitting the fractions and the whole numbers up. And then we simply just multiply to find the product of these smaller arrays to add them back together, right? So 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 2 fifths. And again, you might just need to kind of multiply it over here on the side, and that's okay. Here we got 10 fifths, which we know is really just 2. There we go. Then we have 7 times 1 third. There we go. We just multiply over that, which we know is going to be 7 thirds. And then we have 1 third times 2 fifths which we know is going to be 2 fifteenths. So now that we have all our smaller partial products, we need to add those back together, right? So the whole numbers are quite easy. We're obviously going to have 37. Now I can't add these fractions as is because the denominators are not the same. I need to find a common denominator. Well, because I'm Dr. Bones, I know that 7 thirds can turn into fifteenths quite easily if I just multiply this by a big one of 5 over 5 and I'm going to get 35 fifteenths. So when I add those together, my fraction is going to be 37 fifteenths. Okay? Well, I know that that is not a good mixed number because I don't want a mixed number with an improper fraction. So I just simply do whatever strategy you would like, and I need to convert this improper fraction to a mixed number. And when I do that, I know that I can make two holes which would leave me with 7 fifteenths left over. 
So my product of five and one thirds times seven and two fifths is gonna be 39 holes, because I have to add my holes together, with a leftover of seven fifteenths. This might be a little bit more time consuming than turning it into improper fractions, but all the numbers we're dealing with are small. And so we're less likely to make mistakes on bigger multiplication or bigger division. So we think that our Fossil here really represents 39 and 7 fifteenths. Ah! But I think we were wrong. I think it's actually a T-Rex. Run! I'm just kidding. Just a little math humor there. So here we have a we-do problem. Make sure you're writing this one down in your notes. So here now, we don't have a fraction with our whole number. Well, that's pretty easy. I'm just going to put that one on the side. And it's just like I don't have another place value. So here I have 8. And then up here, I'm going to have 5 plus 2 sixths. And now I'm just going to find my partial products, right? 8 times 5 is 40. 8 times 2 sixths. If I just put that over 1 and multiply across, I get 16 sixths. So I know my answer should be 40 and 16 6, but this is a mixed number. So let's just go ahead and turn 16 6 into 2 and 4 6. And now I add my partial products together and I'm going to get 42 and 4 6. Or if I simplify that, that'd be 42 wholes and 2 thirds. So now I think that my fossil up here really represents 42 and 2 thirds. And luckily, there's no dinosaurs trying to scare us this time. Let's take a look at a U-try problem. So our U-try problem is 10 and 1 third times 3 and 3 eighths. And again, we're trying to figure out what does this fossil really represent. So go ahead and pause the video, try this one by yourself, and then push play to check your work. So hopefully you just paused and now we're trying it. So let me go ahead and draw my big array, my big open array here. And here I'm going to do 10 plus 1 third. Up here I'll do 3 plus 3 eighths. And now we just multiply our partial product. So here we have 30. This is going to be 38, which I know is going to be a mixed number in a second. Here, 3 times 1 third, that's just 1, so I can just write the 1 there. And then 1 third times 3 eighths, Oop, there we go. When I multiply across, I should get 3 twenty-fourths. And I'm actually going to go ahead and simplify that down to 1 eighth. You could write 3 twenty-fourths there and then find the common denominator later. There's a couple different ways to do it, but just because I'm a really smart doctor, I'm going to simplify that right away to 1 8. So now I add up my whole numbers and I'm going to get 31. And then my fraction is 31 8, which again, I know I can't have a mixed number with an improper fraction. So I know that would be 3 wholes and 7 8 left over. So if I add those together, this fossil is 34 wholes and 7 8. So hopefully you're able to uncover the value of that fossil correctly. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Go back and rewatch the video, see where your mistake was, and get better at math today. As always, thank you so much for checking out Instructive Beats. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online in, in the paleontology field. Please check out our website at instructivebeats.com. Check out the merchandise. Check out all our timers, videos, lessons, and songs. And we appreciate you again. Thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out.